Welcome to Something Came From Baltimore. My name is Tom Yowker, and I'll be your host today. Something Came From Baltimore is a jazz, blues, and R&B podcast and show, and it's not really about Baltimore. If you've been listening to the show, there are three things you probably have figured out by now. Number one, I love the Beatles. In fact, I have a limited run series called The Beatles Come to America, and I host it with the Beatle guru, Brooke Halpin. And we discuss all the U.S. release albums. And I have to admit, it's a pretty good podcast. and You have to check it out. It's available on Spotify, iTunes, etc. The link is in the show notes. Number two, I have a thing for jazz guitarist Mary Halverson. I think she's great, and I love her mind and how it works, and her recordings and concerts are top-notch, and I would love to interview her one day, and hopefully it will happen. The third is that I love big band jazz, and when I think of big bands, I think of modern-day classical music. The intensity of the sound and how all the layers are woven together And you have like 10 to 20 people just grooving on one piece of music. And it's majestic. Duke Ellington, Count Basie, and my personal favorite is Oliver Nelson. They're all masters of weaving music and dreams together. Big bands are expensive, and in this day and age, they're pretty scarce. And if they're active, they're normally playing standards and not originals. My ears are always open for a big band recording that is awesome, and I found one. It's a great recording that I want you all to listen to. It's called Ari's Fun House by the Ben Markley Big Band featuring Ari Honig. Ari Honig is an amazing jazz drummer from Philadelphia and during the years has released a string of amazing albums. Most of them had a guitar-based jam feel to it. Long story short, Ben Markley played for Ari Honig as a musician and learned his music and adapted it to a big band sound. And we have this album, Ari's Fun House. Let's get into the interview with Ben Markley. Let's listen to a sample of the second track of Ari's Fun House. It's called Lyric. Ben Markley, welcome to Something Came From Baltimore. Thank you, so glad to be here. We got you up early to talk about your new recording. It's Ari's Fun House. Uh, it came out April 15th, 2022. It's on your label. It's the Ben Markley Big Band, along with uh, OA2 Records. Okay, so I want people to love this album. I'm very excited. I reached out to you because I was playing it, and I'm like, okay, I want the world to, to hear it. So let's start from the beginning. Some people might not know who you are, and, and Give a little background as to where you're located in America and and you have so many projects going on. Sure. My name is Ben Markley. Uh, I'm kind of on the on the front range in the in the Denver area um, since about 2007. Shortly after somewhere in 2008 or 2009 I started teaching adjunct for the University of Wyoming um, which was um, about you know two and a half hours away from where I was living so I was making the drive up there I finished a doctorate up in 2010 at the University of Colorado, at which point I started also teaching at Colorado State University. Um, so for a few years I taught at both the University of Wyoming and Colorado State, uh, but then in, at 2000, in 2013 I moved to the University of Wyoming, I moved to Laramie to teach there and I'm in the Director of Jazz Studies and, and run a small but growing program and and so that's you know kind of part of my life but the other the other part as you mentioned is I do try to keep a lot of projects going and you know one of the most recent that's that's come on uh, pretty strong since 2017 is I started to lead a big band. How did you decide that you were gonna work on his material yeah all the way back in 2019 i think yeah we played i did a small group thing with him at a jazz festival in in texas well i had known about ari um just from you know my time in new york and, and all of that this was like the first time that i really was checking out his music in a deep way because you know I knew enough to know when when the, the the person booking the festival said hey we're we're doing this he's our guest I was like, okay, this, you know, this is some really serious stuff, and you want to make sure that you show up because it's he's got his uh, rhythmic language and, and things that, like, if you show up and do what you think whatever normal is, you won't be ready. And 
checking out his music and, and practicing it, I really saw that there was a, a, a great depth to what he was doing. You know, both harmonically, but but also you know melodically in, in his in his compositions. So with that, uh, you know, a few a few months later after after this gig, I just asked him. I said, "Hey, is this anything that you'd be interested in doing?" And so you know, we started the process from there. His uh, music, you know, primarily has like a jazz fusion take, and you're gonna take it all and develop into a big band setting. It's very exciting. Was that the intent? And we're going big band on this. Yeah, I, I thought so. Um, I, you know, I guess when you're when you're doing stuff like this, or at least for me, you know, I'm always kind of listening to music under that scope. Is how can I present something in this in this larger context that might be a different way or another avenue for other people to um, to receive this music? What a cool thing is like, hey, we're really going to work on your songs. We're going to big band it, and hey, by the way, come out and play on it. Yeah, he was so great to work with throughout. I mean, this this was you know different from some of the, from all of the other arranging projects I do because you know usually you've got as an arranger you've got your bag of stuff that you do and and you you hear the stuff and everything generally at least I had done up to that point kind of fit in in my bag as far as what I do. You want this arrangement, great. Here it is. But with with Ari stuff, I mean, it was like I transcribed a number of people's solos. For a good six to eight months, I mean, I was only playing his recordings, just trying to figure out what was going on. So many times where I call or send him an email and just say, hey, I think I'm hearing this. Is this what this is? And, and sometimes he'd be like, yep, you got it. Or sometimes it's, well, it's actually this grouping of, of these rhythms and notes and, and so forth. And um, it was a great experience. I mean, it was awesome. I mean, that, that's what I want. You know, I, I, I want to keep stretching myself and my abilities and it was um it was awesome and 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 what what was great is when he came out it was just he was really happy with the stuff too and that that made it all worth it um we had to wait a little while you know he came out i guess this would have been in october of 2019 we we played that small group hit in like the february or something of 2019 so we played that and then our plans were to record it in the summer of 2020 and then covid uh killed that and so um you know to do it last summer um, was just yeah it was very cathartic in a lot of ways yeah. tension and release all this build up to this moment it must be very exciting like the whole album crackles so you must feel like hey this is happening we're on to something here this is really good like there must have been a lot of high positive energy in the, in the room because it, it just feels like it thanks a lot yeah i I think there was, and it was, I mean, you know, I, I don't go into any project thinking about the level of difficulty or, or any, anything like that. Like, I think that good music is good music and, you know, whatever's required is, is, is required. But this myself and so many people just, you know, the session was, was stressful and not, not because things weren't going well. I mean, we recorded five tunes on the first day, which is, you know, pretty incredible for a, for a big band record uh, and tunes like this. But it was so gratifying when, when we played some of the stuff back and the band was listening to it. And they're just like, wow, this really sounds good. And, um, you know, I, I think I think it's a unique project. It's not, you know, sometimes we think big band and it's we put it over here in the, in the little box and like, I, I'd like to think that it kind of gets outside of that. I'm a big band fan. I can't get enough big band. It's so rare that you know people are willing to do a big band album and then to present it this way. It's it's just wow, it's a, a very expensive cocktail. It's, it tastes very good. We're going to get into this album a little. We're going to talk about some of the tracks. I like to see the contrast between his original song and then how you developed it. Although I can't match it up because his style is completely different. And then where you're going is, is a little different also. Uh, the four songs that I picked out, one, the first one is Birdless, which I felt with, just started off that album as a freight train and it really never stopped. We, we talked about, like you said, that Tommy mentioned the tension in the release. And, and that was one that in October of 2019 when we when we played we did a gig in at Dazzle Jazz Club in Denver the band we only had about 2 hours to rehearse and so at that point i think i had six uh, six tunes 
for the record, and and we only got to rehearse five of them. And Birdless was one that we didn't get to to rehearse, and so so obviously we didn't play that on the gig. And then you know hearing it, there was a lot of stuff in there, but it was it was a lot of fun um, to to hear that. And that that was one where I I, I felt like it was a really great balance of you know taking the great tune that he wrote because there's so much just in the tune that he wrote but also being able to put my own voice in there and, and kind of put a stamp on it I, that was a lot of fun of oppression the recording is just as a classic originally it's a jazz fusion and with heavy guitar work and it's it's really awesome so you took this and you really worked this thing must have blew his mind too the way it was turning out yeah he was he was pretty happy with it and this this is one i think to the to the listener that you don't necessarily hear you know upon first listen like what what all is going on this is a thing where the, the, the just the introduction in itself, like if you're not looking at the music, it, it sounds easier than it is. And so that was one that myself and the whole band had to spend a lot of time kind of getting together. And then once we did it, it was like, oh, this is this is super cool. Well, I want to feature piano solo. Every time I listen to it, that's where I stop and say, "This is a this is a piece of the song I want to focus on." Oh well, well, thank you. That that makes my day because that was something. So this this tune is in is in eleven eight, and you know to deal with those groupings, I mean that was that was tough. And and on you know original recordings of of that with his band and stuff. It you know they play they introduce the melody and play play the parts of it but then with the solo, um, you know for a while the band just drops out and it's piano and as an arranger, you know when you're when you're doing a project like this you've got a great band you want to make sure that you give everybody um, solo space and stuff like that but just just with the sheer difficulty of that. I, I joked with a lot of friends like, oh, if, if I give this to this person, you know, they're all going to, they'll never talk to me again. So for, for me, this was like, it was, it was a good, you know, six, seven months to really, to really be to the point where I could play something that I felt like said something. And, and that, that was a point where Ari was super cool. I, t I took some lessons with him. You know just about playing over that and and so forth um uh, but i was really i was really happy with with how that came out i mean we did we ended up doing three takes of that tune just because it was you know some difficult stuff but what was great is like we came out and, and i was really happy with the three takes as far as just soloistically what i what i played i mean it was when they were take when we were selecting takes it was nice to hear the other folks say wow all of these are really good. You could you could use all of them.
We have one more to go, and it's just a uh, green sleeve. Part that I would like to highlight is the guitar solo on this. It's, it just blows you away. It's interesting how all his originals had guitar all over it, and it feels really good in a big band setting. It, it's like it elevates the song even more because it just adds a little more energy. The guitar solo on this, I think, is just downright amazing. Yeah, me, me too. Um, and. And that's, you know, I've mentioned some people's names, but Steve Kowalczyk's right at the top of about people who live, you know, along the front range who are just, who are world-class players. And he, wow, his his solos, you know, on the on the record were just, just incredible. Um, but he was someone who, you know, you mentioned guitar and Ari's music and stuff. Not not only did, did Steve get the language, but but just sonically, uh, you know, changing the sounds of his guitar, um, you know, to fit different things, whether it's from Birdless or his solo on Lyric or Green Spleen. I mean, man, it just, you know, when you hear that, I just, yeah, how, how can, you know, I'm, I'm obviously biased, but how can you not love it? And he just, I just think he crushed it and, and really, uh, really found it. So. this album to be like amazing wow up to the album cover the album cover is beautiful oh. it just, yeah. everything is just perfect and i think your future is you know maybe adapting you know really interesting work and, and bringing it into a big band setting it's uh, sky's the limit if this is your blueprint for your future you know you can do whatever you want you really say thank you thank you very much for joining me today on something came from baltimore my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Ben Markley, for chatting with me today on Something Kid Baltimore. The album is called Ben Markley Big Band with Ari Honig. It's called Ari's Fun House. show is over. Everyone, please have a great day today.